got the harpoons ready, the gaffs ready. We got fuel on the boat, and we're going to try to break the 28 Freeman in today with a swordfish. We have not caught a fish on it yet, so it's a good day to catch one. A nice fresh wind on leader. The new Hooker Electric 80 Pen International. Detachable drive, so we can do a hand cranking if we want. Just made the run, 35 miles, swordfish. Very calm on the inside once we got to the current. Light chop, you know, two footers probably. But uh, boat did good, getting about two miles per gallon, so happy to see that. We're gonna start getting the rods rigged up and set up. And uh, we can't get a swordfish today. A long way down, 1,600 feet of water. Got down on this one. We got two rods out fishing for swordfish. Just gonna watch that rod tip up to that little tiny bite. You know them whacking it. We have a slack line. There could be a swordfish swimming it up. We're gonna gamble that he's on there. We're gonna start bringing up this other rod. Fingers crossed. He's swimming up, Madison's clear on the first line, and we're gonna make a decision if we're gonna let someone hand crank in the rod holder or keep the electric on it. What do y'all wanna do, hand crank in the holder? Hand crank, hand crank. Hand crank. Sounds like we're gonna hand crank here in a few minutes. <laughs> All right, we got two gaffs ready and a harpoon and a tag stick, everything's ready. Keep on turning. <laughs> We got a swordfish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the very first drop on the 28 Freeman, we broke it in. Fresh reel, fresh hooker electric, pen 80. Laney, Madison, Charlie, me, Landon. We got one for dinner. Not a monster, he's a perfect eater. And nice fish. You know, the bigger they get, the more mercury they get. So honestly, a nice uh, slot size fish is perfect. We're gonna let them die out, we'll pull them in here in a second. Nice. Good fish. Good fish. Perfect eater. Nicely done. <laughs> Good job, Landon. 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 Good job, we broke the 28 Freeman in the right way. Down we go. Eight pound sinker going down. Buoy's away. So this is the electric motor that is the detachable drive on these hand crank rods. So we got the pen 80 on this one, the pen 50 up there. Quick push button release, snap on and off. So if you want a hand crank like we did the last half of that fight, it works perfect. And uh, if you don't want to, you want to check your bait, you can just leave it on. Plugs in, super simple. So it's uh, a great way to have a hand crank option if you want to deep drop for swordfish. And then you'd be at 35. You didn't do 45s, you did 35s. Yeah, but I thought the bar used to be 45 pounds. Sure? Oh, That's 40. Right. I don't know where down a long time, but it's uh, but I remember two big plates for 45 or 135. I'm debating whether I have to go work out again. It's been a long time. I really don't want to, but is the bar 45 pounds or 40 pounds? I don't remember. Landed behind the camera's been working out. He's a beast now, they said. We just drifted an hour. No bice that drift. But we're gonna reset. Hopefully we didn't get the only one in the area. 
it's getting close to lunchtime, and uh, we're gonna move a little bit shallower and try to drift. Drift number three, we just ran about two and a half miles. You don't realize about the golf stream out here, you know, going two or three knots. You know, in an hour, that's how far you drift, so I could be like, oh, we're not even moving, but you know, you're moving with this current, so. The drone's up. We've only been on this drift for about five minutes, and we just had a bite, you know, the tip went bink. So we're seeing if he eats it. Madison really wants to get the wall on the wall at Bud and Mary's. She said she heard some picture of space was opening up, and there's one picture we think we could replace. <laughs> eat it. He hit it again. He didn't eat it yet, but it thumped it really good again there. He bumped it. It's probably a little 20 pound. He don't want to eat it. The fish has hit the bait multiple times. That's sword vision. They're notorious for hitting it multiple times. I don't want to eat it, but we're hoping that he swallows it and eats it. We'll take a small one. We'll take any one. One for the good guys, for the fish. We still got two rods out there, so we still got one good bait, hopefully. This one's probably destroyed. We pretty much rode off that drift because we thought the fish had got our bait, but he came back, you know, assuming it was the same one about five minutes later. Thumped it two more times, and we had the drone up, and we got tight. So hopefully he stays. Charlie's working the back rod. And a little bit of luck, Madison will get her first swordfish of the day. She got one before, two before, actually. But uh, a little bit of luck, we'll get another one today. The motor's off, and we are hand cranking. We are turning and burning. Full power, Madison. Full power. Keep going. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Keep going fishing. Keep going. I think there's only one there. So we had the tag ready. We were gonna tag and release them, but the fish is gut hooked. You can see his stomach hanging out. And there's no point, you know, it's a legal size swordfish. There's no point to let it go and feed it to the shark. So we got plenty of people at the marina that wanna eat it. And uh, not bad, but you can see he's just hooked so deep, wasn't gonna live, so. No tag release on that. Gorgeous colors. All right, in the box it goes. So, like I said, that fish was gut hooked. He was hooked deep. That's really the only reason we kept him. He's pretty much cookie cutter size of the first one. We really just wanted one for dinner, but we got plenty of people to feed him too. And I ain't feeding the sharks. They get enough to eat, I promise you that. So we're gonna chop his nose off and put him in the fish box there. And three drops, two swordfish and the new 28 Freeman. Great day to break it in, great way. You don't change what's working. That's the Blue Ocean manufacturing skirt and it's going back on for drop number four. We got two, really happy about that. One more would be even better. But if we don't get any more, we're still happy. And we got plenty of fish to eat and plenty to give our friends back at the marina. We have not had a bite the last two drifts. It's been about two hours without a bite. Some porpoise were coming by. I guess bottom of dolphin, technically. But they kind of disappear right when we grab the camera out. We still got a little while longer. Sadie should be getting out of school here in a few minutes. And uh, my mom's picking her up. And then we'll go meet her. And back at home here later on today. And if you don't hook a swordfish, that's what's really nice about these reels. You can use the electric motor to bring up the bait to wind up for the day and go home. We may stop on the way home and try to get a black fin tuna on the hump, just a real quick appetizer. But two swordfish, a great day. Broken the 28 Freeman the right way. And this will be up momentarily, then we'll be running back home at 40 miles an hour and hopefully swing in and catch a tuna real quick and then back to the dock. Piped it! I can see the hook out of his mouth still though. The triple tail ate the bait, we smoked the bamboo. Yeah. Please stay on there. Dolphin, 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 dolphin! Here. Mahi, mahi! Oh, boom! Triple tail and mahi double up. Oh, oh spit it! Mess. Here he comes, here he comes. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we tight. Oh, no, dolphin. Another dolphin. So what happened was we were running, and I ran over a piece of bamboo. I didn't see it. The girls thought I was trying to hit it. We turned back around. There's a nice triple tail. We got him on now, and about 15 or 20 miles just swam up. We got some of those on right now. There we go. The old triple tail right there. That's the one we wanted.
that is the elusive triple tail. You can see why they call them that. They got three tails there. One of the best eating fish out here in the ocean. We got a handful of mahi up that bamboo and a nice triple tail. We're gonna be in good shape. They got super big spikes in their dorsal fins. You gotta be careful there, but we just got more dinner. We're gonna try to get a tuna real quick, then we gotta get home. Just by luck. Just want a couple of black fins for the poolside appetizer, and we'll have it all. A little football. There you go. Incoming. One of the appetizers. The hatch is open. Football coming in. Woo. Doubled up. Laney didn't. Laney wasn't gonna take no for an answer. Wrong oh, Bonita, wrong species. That'd be good crab bait though. Sassy wants that for a crab trap. We said we wanted one tuna for an appetizer. We got one black fin tuna. The last couple of bonitas. So it's time to wrap it up and head back to Bud and Mary's. Made it back safely. And we have got a pile of fish. Now we have to decide which ones to eat first. And we just passed Houseboat Row. And these are all the houseboats that Bud and Mary's that you can stay on. And they're just like floating hotel rooms. And there's motels here, a couple houses here, but the houseboats are really cool. It's a unique experience. So keep that in mind if you come down here to Bud and Mary's want to go on a fishing trip. That is the bounty. Two swordfish, five mahi, a triple tail, and a tuna appetizer. We're gonna get them in the barrel now. Fish box work good, they're iced down all day. All we have to do is give them a little nose job. We're gonna go cut some up and we're not gonna clean everything tonight because it's kind of late. We have to wash the whole boat and we'll clean what we want for dinner and we'll clean the rest of it tomorrow. But we'll see back at the flay table. The not so fun part, washing the boat. But a couple things are making it easier. This boat was ceramic coated, so we're super excited about that. And we have the Spot Zero mobile mini unit now. So when we wash this boat then, we don't have to chamois it. It'll be spot free. This is the machine right here. If you ever want to get one, you can get a special gift if you use code STANSFAM. This is the Spot Zero Mobile Mini. We also have the Spot Zero Mobile 2.0. So two different versions, but this is perfect for small boats, especially if you're traveling. And uh, if you go online and order one, it'll make your life that much easier washing a boat. You know, whether you got a nice center console or a sport fish, highly recommend the Spot Zero. And uh, just makes the end of the day that much easier. So you don't have to sham all the spots off. And, you know, you're putting clean water on a boat and it'll be spot free. So code stands fan, go to their website and check it out. Let's go cut some fish. So we're going to have a fish smorgasbord to eat. A little black fin tuna appetizers, a little football, some mahi. We're actually probably going to clean the swordfish tomorrow because we're trying to get home to get Sadie to get where she's going. But uh, I know Landon is very excited because he wants fish nuggies. And we'll probably eat a little fish tonight. And then tomorrow we're going to do a big feast, probably with the swordfish, maybe the triple tail. I'll put right off there. And that's a female, I know, it has got the rounded head. And they already got row and I'm like, these are the eggs. They start spawning at such a young age and that's where they're a prolific species. We're gonna cut the skin off right here, just like that. Feed the tarpon down deep. Tarpon sharks eat that. These are the rib bones. We'll get rid of those because we don't want to eat the bones there. I know some cultures they do, but I will pass. We want to cut out the center line here where a couple more pin bones are and that dark red meat that gives it the fishy flavor. That's good to go, so. There's a mahi filet. This tuna, I know he's small, but he'll be a perfect little appetizer. We bled him out there, ice him down real well, and plenty big enough for everybody to have a few bites. Hopefully we're gonna catch some live bait and go do a tuna video soon, because there's been a lot of black fins around, and you get the bigger ones on the live bait a lot of times, so. So that'll be our tuna appetizer, and we will see you guys tomorrow, probably cutting up swordfish. Halloween's coming up, we're practicing. <laughs> Are we on? Are we ready? Good we good? Welcome back to the kitchen. We're here with Charlie. I'm here. I'm excited. It was a really great day fishing, and we got a lucky triple tail. We did get the triple at the end. That was luck. That was luck. Subi so was not. He was driving. He didn't see the bamboo, and he got really close to it. But we went back, circled around, caught the triple tail. Most it's delicious. It's most delicious fish in the sea. No doubt. So we got triple tail coming up. We got swordfish. We oh, did yeah. mahi nuggets last night, and we're gonna do mahi and triple tail too. So we're gonna have a feast tonight. We're waiting on Franker. He's uh, running behind, but he'll be here soon. He don't miss a free meal. That's true. But we're so hungry that we can't wait anymore, so we're gonna do a little bit of an appetizer real quick. We're gonna make some of this triple tail. We were gonna do it fancy, but starvation always takes precedence. Yeah, you have to eat. Hunger needs Ugh, to be, it's getting we need to be fed. Growing boys around here, so. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get this done. Check out this beautiful triple tail we have over here. Look at that meat. It's a bright, white, beautiful meat. If you haven't had triple tail before, it's one of the best eating fish in the ocean, hands down. 
we got a nice little blend of some panko, some flour, some special seasonings. We got our little egg wash here. We're gonna get the oil hot, we're gonna get it crispy, and we're gonna get it rolling. Stay tuned. That is a big, beautiful piece of grade A swordfish, fresh from the waters off Isla Murata. But if you cut it up just right, it cooks even better. So check me out, we gotta go right down here so we can get some nice, beautiful steaks. Those giant slabs are good if you're gonna broil it, but if you really wanna do something nice, you go right down the middle. When you often buy swordfish at the store, you get those really nice triangle cuts, and those triangle cuts cook beautifully, and that's kind of what we're gonna go for right here. We're gonna blacken this swordfish and do a nice topper with it, so we don't wanna make these too thick. We just want some nice steaks. They bronze beautifully on either side. That's pretty much what you're looking for. That fat sits right by the skin, tastes like butter when you cook it properly, and you get this beautiful marbled meat here. It's one of the best eating fish you're gonna find. Give that a nice little wash right in the flour. I hope we enjoy my swordfish tonight. <laughs> Are you gonna give Landon a piece? Depends. Subi didn't catch anything. He couldn't get a bite on his turn. He can't take credit for this one. No. Even though he couldn't take credit for the last one because even though he might have... Hooked one fish. <laughs> he hooked one fish in a month he of fishing. Hooked one fish and thought that he was yeah. Superman. Super Subi. Man. But he did get his first ever snook today, so we're gonna show you a picture of that right now. Did you get a picture? <laughs> no. Oh, it's too small for a picture. Never mind. <laughs> Beautiful fish. The best part. What was that? What was that famous line in marketing? It's uh, you don't sell the steak, you sell the sizzle, right? Sizzle it up, baby. Here we go. Check it out. Oh yeah. That's gonna cook up nice and pretty. Beautiful, beautiful fry. Like right, a pan seal, we're not going too crazy. Triple tails are really delicate meat, so you wanna be real delicate with it when you cook it. Works best if you have some kind of topper for this. We're gonna do something probably like a tropical salsa with some mango, black bean, peppers, onions, something really nice to kind of offset the deliciousness of the fish here. We'll see how it goes. If Frank gets here with the ingredients, he should be here soon. I think, I think I heard the door close. I, I, I put him down there on the floor. So. Number one Los Cayos hot oh, sauce bottle. This is zero, zero, 001. My friend. <laughs> Me and me, guys, man. That's love right there, ladies and gentlemen. That is beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I want to see what you think. Los Cayos hot sauce. I'm a hot sauce guy. We got the pepper tings, but this is I'm really excited about this. Thank you, Frank. We're gonna, we're gonna get into this in just a minute. <laughs> Franker is uh, just here yeah. for free food. Franker's just oh, here for the free tonight. food, baby. What is happening now? What is happening? Corruption. You guys. No. <laughs> we got a beautiful plate of triple tail. We're gonna put a little special topper on that right here. We got a little bit of pepper, black bean, and lime. I would have loved to put some mango in there, but we don't have any mangoes, so we're just going to work it out. The first course is up. Triple tail in paradise. Let's try it out. I think these are Claire's. They don't fit me. What do you think? <laughs> They're you. <laughs> I'm going first on the triple tail. Look at that. Look how white and flaky that is coming apart. Triple tails at Kyo's are one of my favorite fish to catch, and they are one of the best eating fish to catch down there. They're a little tough to fillet because they got a lot of scales and spikes, but super soft and flaky. We're we'll going to see how it turns out. Chef Charlie's in the house. Let's get some of this uh, mango salsa on top. Triple tail is one of the best. Can't beat it. Ooh, got a little kick to it too. Put some seasoning on this, huh, Charlie? Very good. We got swordfish coming next, though. Come back for seconds? Yeah. She's going back for seconds. How was the first piece? It was really good. Chef Charlie? Go back for seconds. You did my uncle Frank Nate, dirty. Nate, scarf his, and Helen's eating hers. They all say it's delicious. Is it good, Helen? It's so good. Delicious. Did Trixie get a piece of it? No. no Will she get a piece? No. No people fish. Can she eat fish? Yep. She all right, Trixie ain't getting no fish. <laughs> Frank, did you eat it? No, I'm going to try it right now. Helen's going to be nice enough to give me a bite. Yeah. yeah. What? It does have some kick to it. He put some seasoning on it. I will say that. I want a piece of 
Good, Charles. It would be better if Subi wasn't here, but... <laughs> It's a love-hate relationship around here. It's a love-love. It is time to make some Cajun blackened swordfish. It's one of my favorite ways to do swordfish. We're going to do that with a bacon maple crushed nut topper. And we are going to use this new state-of-the-art, ultra-exclusive Yeti cast iron skillet. This thing just came in the mail for King Nicholas. Check this thing out. It is solid. Weighs a good, oh, I'd estimate somewhere in the neighborhood of 433 pounds, and we're gonna take advantage of every single piece of that metal. So, we're gonna get this hot, we're gonna get this going, we're gonna sear some swordfish. I'm really excited to share this with you. Check it out. You're blackening fish, you wanna make sure you get a nice, nice covering on either side of it like that. Feels pretty hot. Put a little bit of that whiskey dust in there. If you ever had the Traeger whiskey dust, it's, it's nice. I don't know if you can see the smoke, but the house is full of smoke. Um, we were going to do it outside, but the burner wasn't working, so we're doing it inside. And the new cast iron from Yeti. So my piece is ready. I, what I get on mine. I like you got a little bit of this uh, maple sweet mesquite here. Well, That's the one that. you like. You like that one. And you got black mesquite on those ones, right? Oh yeah. So I'm up first. I have not had swordfish in months. I did not remember the last time I ate it. But that is how you break in a 28 Freeman. You got out there fishing, catch some fish, and make some memories. Gotta love the bacon on top of it too. Bacon makes bacon. every bacon makes everything better, doesn't bacon it? Bacon is really good flavor. I mean just. The triple tail was delicious as well, you know, like juicy, nice, lightly fried fish, but this is just such a different texture, you know, more steaky and meaty. It's not dried out, you can see the moisture in it. If you dry out, swordfish are ruining it, so we'll get some opinions from them when they eat the black and stuff, but uh, A plus on this one, good job, Charlie, and hope you guys enjoyed the video so far. We're gonna wrap this up, just get a couple more bites, and we'll have a new video for you guys coming out the week after this. That swordfish was delicious, especially with the crushed nuts on top of it, that seasoning. Bacon, bite, bits, everything. Ooh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Based off the size of these fillets, I would say the swordfish was bigger than you. Probably was. <laughs> We're ready to get more opinions. Charles, did you try the swordfish? It's delicious. Is it good? Yes. Right. Chef Charlie gets an A plus? Yes. How about you, Nate? Sold. Good? And that's awesome. It's Nate's first meal over here in the Stancic household. Charlie, they all approve. Good job. It's my pleasure and privilege as always. Thanks for the last. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to wrap up this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. Yeah, Want to come down and go fishing at Bud and Mary's? Maybe. Give the Marine Office a call or go to the website, budmary's.com, and check it out. And hopefully, we'll see you down here. The fish tank's doing well. We'll show you a quick peek of that. And uh, if you want any clothing, any fishing tackle, go to my website, stansfishing.com, and go get you some gear. So, we'll see you all next time.